Okay, let's talk about logarithmic equations. And that's what we have right here. And in this particular video, obviously, I'm going to teach you how to solve an equation like this. Now, you're not going to deal with an equation like this, and uh, generally speaking, in most like Algebra 1 courses, certainly not like a pre-algebra course. This is along the lines of something that you would be studying, uh, definitely a topic in like Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus, and beyond, okay? So the logarithms are extremely important in mathematics, and you're going to know how to, uh, you must know how to deal with them, and their buddies, their uh, related cousins, which are exponential functions. So I'll kind of get into a little bit more about this in a second, but in this particular equation, you don't even need a calculator to solve this. So if you think you could solve it, Go to pause the video and put your answer into the comment section. And uh, if you know what you're doing, it'll take you about oh, maybe a minute to solve. Okay, but again, those of you who are at those higher math levels absolutely need to be able to solve something like this. And we're going to get into the exact steps to get the solution to this equation in one moment. But let me first uh, quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, if you're failing to math, it doesn't have to be that way, okay? Everyone could be pretty successful in math if uh, they want to, but it requires two things. One, you got to be willing to put in the work, okay? So if you're not working that hard or studying hard and you're struggling, well, you got to first start working harder, okay? But the second thing you need to do or need to be successful in mathematics is great math instruction, clear, understandable, comprehensive. That's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link uh, to it in the description of this video. It will help you out tremendously. Also, if you're pre uh, preparing for any sort of test prep, I'm sorry, any sort of um, test uh, with a math section, something along the line, uh, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, maybe the ASVAB or teacher certification exam, I have a ton of test prep courses that I can help you out. If you homeschool, I have excellent middle and high school math courses for homeschoolers. And if this video helps you out, consider helping me out by liking and subscribing to my channel. All right, so let's get into this problem. And uh, let's first of all just talk generally about what we need uh, uh, to know for this particular problem, just, uh, you know, basically how do we solve a logarithmic equation? So the first thing you need to understand, let's kind of start over here actually, is that uh, when you s solve an exponential equation, something like this, uh, 2x uh, is equal to 7, this is an exponential equation because our variable is an exponent, okay? Well, an exponential equation, when you have an exponential equation, you're going to use logarithms to solve that, okay? Now, uh, exponential functions and logarithmic functions are inverses of one another. So when you're dealing with a logarithmic equation, you're going to be using exponents, okay, powers, all right? So that's the first thing you need to be thinking about is like, oh, I'm dealing with a logarithmic equation. What am I going to be using? Am I going to be using my LOG button? On my calculator? No. The answer is no. What you need to be thinking is, oh, I see LOG or LN. That's the natural log. Okay. For those of you out there studying that, if you see any of these things, you're going to think to yourself, wait a minute, that guy on YouTube uh, told me to be thinking exponents, exponential functions. And that's exactly what you want to be thinking. And then when you see an exponential equation, you want to be thinking logarithm. So it's, you know, you got to be thinking the inverse, right? So that's the first main concept here. Now, the way we um, convert a logarithm, or the way we, uh, we write it as um, a power, okay, or an ex something that involves exponents, is one of my favorite sayings in mathematics, and that's bacon and, and I'll write it out here, eggs. Bacon and eggs, and you're like saying, all right, some of you are probably like, oh my goodness, why am I even listening to this guy on YouTube? He's talking about bacon and eggs. He's probably hungry. He hasn't had his breakfast yet. Well, listen, I'm telling you something very, very important here that will help you out. So when you have a logarithmic expression or equation written out, log, uh, and you have some stuff here equal to some other stuff. Well, what this is, this little bead number down here, okay, this little number, this subscript, that's the base this is the answer, and this little e, okay, is the exponent. So you kind of think of this as bacon and eggs, B-A-E, which means that you can write, uh, rewrite um, a logarithmic expression as an exponential or a power expression by going, okay, the base, right, like 2 
to the fifth power is equal to what? 32, right? So 2 is the base, 5 is the exponent, and the answer is 32. So the base to the little exponent is equal to the answer. So you just shuffle these things around, and that's how you uh, write a logarithm as a power, okay? But just remember, bacon and eggs, whoops, uh, bacon and eggs. Let's just go ahead and uh, highlight this here for you. And if you never um, realized that, or you know, if you're always confused about that, hopefully this little mnemonic will help you out. Okay, now the other thing we're gonna need for this uh, problem is we need to understand some of the properties of logarithms. There's other ones, but this is the one that we're gonna be using right here. And it's, uh, uh, I believe it's called the product property of logarithms, but basically it works like this. When you have the logarithm of a product, like the log of A times B, you can separate these uh, two um, uh, factors here by addition, okay? Now, when we have a logarithmic expression, let me erase this guy right here, like this, log A times B, and we, we're going in this direction, you would be what we call expanding this um, uh, expanding this expression. So if I told you to expand log A times B, you could write it as log A plus log B. Okay, that's called expansion. If I give you this, I said uh, condense or rewrite this log A plus log B, you would go the other way and you would give me log AB. So you need to know how to expand and condense. Again, these are properties of logarithms. So you got to understand that. You got to understand bacon and eggs, we got uh, how we can write logarithms as powers. And you also have to see the big picture that when you're dealing with a logarithmic equation, we need to be thinking in terms of powers, exponential functions, okay? All right, so that's the big picture here. And if you're like, okay, I understand. Well, if that's the case, then go ahead and tackle this problem. Again, you're not gonna need a calculator just going to need the, well, you will need the calculator, the one between your ears, but again, not that difficult of a problem. Okay, so now let's go ahead and tackle the uh, equation right now. Okay, so the first thing is, and by the way, this is a little bit more advanced than tip near more basic logarithmic equations. So um, if you're kind of like, oh, I just need to learn this, but this one, this problem is too difficult for me, let me give you a couple suggestions. One, I have a ton of videos uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, that I, where I solve logarithmic equations, it can help you out. But two, you definitely want to check out one of my math courses in my math help program, Algebra 2, College Algebra Pre-Calculus. I uh, get into this super thoroughly. All right, so here we have log, okay, 3x plus 7 plus log of x minus 2. Now, one thing that you can have when you have log, okay, this is what we call the common log. The um, base down here is actually base 10. As long as these are the same, I can go ahead and condense this expression. In other words, I'm thinking, okay, this plus this, well, this must have came from log base 10 of 3x plus 7 times uh, um, x minus 2, okay? So you can see that this is equivalent to this. Why? Because it's following this property of logarithms right here, okay? We're just kind of condensing. We're going backwards, all right? You got to be really good at condensing and expanding before you tackle these logarithmic equations. So hopefully you understand this is equal to this, and that's equal to one, okay? So now this is log base 10, just to be super clear about that. In the common logarithm, we don't typically write that uh, base 10, it's just implied that it's there. Okay, now, uh, when you're dealing with a logarithmic equation, uh, logarithmic equation once you have your log uh, part all by itself equaling to like a number, now you're at the uh, stage where you can rewrite this logarithmic uh, expression or equation as a power. Okay, so the base, this is your bacon and eggs. Your base to the exponent is going to be equal to your answer. So let's see how that is done now. So remember, log, the common log is base 10. Okay, so this is the B, right? This right here is the B. And then what is this? Okay, this part, this thing in front of the log. All of this stuff would be, remember, uh, this is the B, so that's the A, okay? So this is the A, and then that's gonna be equal to the E right here, that is the exponent. Okay, so the base to the exponent is equal to the answer. So let's go ahead and write that now. The base is base 10, the exponent is one, okay? So 10 to the first, okay? I'm doing this right here, is equal to the answer, which is this, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and continue on. So 10 to the first is equal to 
uh, 3x plus 7 times uh, x minus 2. So it looks like I have a lovely quadratic equation I need to solve. So this times this is equal to 10. Well, what I need to do here is multiply uh, these two binomials. When I do that, I'm going to get 3x squared plus x minus 14. I'm just showing you the work here is equal to 10. So now I have to solve this quadratic equation. So I'm going to have to set this thing equal to 0. And you're like saying, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to solve a quadratic equation. I thought it was just a logarithmic equation. Yes, math builds upon itself. And if you're at the uh, level of solving logarithmic equations, you should have already mastered quadratic equations. So you're like, oh, I thought I, uh, once I study this, I don't have to remember it anymore. Listen, I told you know, I don't know if you watched my other videos, but I'm telling you, math is interconnected. So always take well-organized notes and... You know, there's really no shortcuts in math. So, yes, you're going to have to solve a quadratic equation here. So we're going to have to set this thing equal to 0. So I'm going to uh, take this 10, move it over to the other side of the equation, subtract 10 from both sides of the equation, I get this uh, uh, trinomial. 3x squared plus x minus 24 is equal to 0. Okay, so what can I do here? Well, luckily, this trinomial we can factor. We always want to try to factor. And uh, there's another skill that hopefully you know how to factor something like this. That will be x plus 3 times uh, 3x minus 8. So solving quadratic equations involves the skill of factoring. Very, very important. Again, these are things that you will uh, typically learn in Algebra 1. What I'm doing right here is at like the Algebra 2 level. So, um, you know, let's say you're in Algebra 1 right now and you're just interested in this and you're only, you know, doing okay. Well, Algebra 2 is going to be much more difficult for you because... You really have to master these skills, okay? And if you're in Algebra 2 and you're like rusty on this, go back and review and get really good at this stuff because you're going to need it, you know, uh, in Algebra 2, College Algebra, and definitely, you know, more advanced mathematics. Okay, so we have x plus 3 times uh, 3x minus 8 is equal to 0. Now I can set each factor equal to 0. Uh, so that's x plus 3 is equal to 0. And 3x minus 8 is equal to 0 and solve for x. So here I get x is equal to negative 3. That's one solution, and here I get x is equal to 8 thirds. Okay, so how did you do? Did you actually uh, solve this problem all by yourself? Well, if you did, I must give you a nice little happy face with the good old 1986, that was a very good year, a flat top haircut, an A+, plus, a 120%, and a few stars just to make you feel extra special today. That's pretty impressive, okay? Uh, and that's a lot of, you know, knowledge contained here. But I would say this problem here, okay, is an average uh, uh, problem in terms of difficulty, okay? So if you're like, that's average, that was a lot of work, yeah, you're going to be doing much more challenging things than that. But um, let's say you don't understand this, you're like overwhelmed. Well, what do you do in terms of learning mathematics? Well, if you're overwhelmed at this stage, you need to back up. You need to kind of look at the skills where you started kind of getting lost, okay? And typically what ends up happening is that a lot of students struggle with things in the past. They forgot how to factor. They're, they don't really know how to solve quadratic equations. They don't understand the big picture about logarithmic equations, exponential functions, etc. So that's why it's so important to get your, you know, um, great math instruction, you know, hopefully you got, you got a great teacher, but if you, you know, if you're not really connecting with your teacher, you know, use a program like mine or someone else's so you can really comprehend and master these concepts because at this level of math, it's going to get much more involved and all these topics are interrelated. But the bottom line is you can do this and some of you are going to have to work harder than others, but everyone can be successful in mathematics. And hopefully this video helped you out. Again, if that uh, was the case, uh, smash that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.